Okay, as usual, I do not do reviews. I offer professional insight to the topic of the video. So today's topic is going to be the Aga T5, okay? So <clears throat> before we get into anything, all right, there's just some stuff that I need to show you that is normally, you know, just a little unorthodox of what I normally do, which is vape on camera. So uh, give me one moment and let me show you something. I would not vape on camera if I didn't have a purpose. This thing is sitting on my DNA 30 mod and it is pumping 30 watts. It is pumping 30 watts. The way it is wicked inside, the way that I have the juice, everything set up in here, it's not leaking and it's keeping up with 30 watts worth of heat. That is amazing for a tank. And that's what makes this little guy a really big deal. So <clears throat> we're going to dive down and open this thing up and there's going to be a lot to talk about with this item that you're going to really want to know. So uh, sit through for the whole video because this one's really going to be worth it. All right. So I got T5 over here. Okay. Now this is something that I really need you guys to take my words for. This thing is an awesome, awesome tank. Okay. This is the new K fun definitely the new K fun okay uh, other things before that were supposed to be like kind of like a dual coil K fun etc etc are all kind of experimental so uh, what do I have here this is the Aga T7 and this is the Aga T5 okay now you might think to yourself like oh they're the same size or whatever whatnot actually if we had to measure it over here this cap over here is just a little bit taller and if we had to measure the airflow over here Okay, I will show you the both airflow. The airflow hole over here, the T5 is larger than the T7. So in many ways, this is actually the big brother, not him. <clears throat> All right, enough about that. So what's so awesome about this device that like you definitely do need to jump on and get your hands on right away? Okay, uh, let me show you something really cool about it. First, I'm going to go ahead and close off the uh, the airflow over here, and then I'm just going to shake out like whatever juice that I have left. Okay. Now the juice is all on this side over here. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is that I'm still going to start unscrewing this thing. Dun, dun, dun. And very very much like a pro tank. I just unscrewed the base from the tank and I could go ahead and work on my coil with the tank on the side. Okay. Normally you would not be able to do this without juice getting everywhere. All right. So this thing is set on the side and then let's take a look at the coil. All right. So initially what happens is that like when you go ahead and uh, open this up, okay, it's going to have a coil pre-built inside. Okay, uh, I don't know about you, but uh, as always, I could only, you know, for every reviewer, you could only review exactly what was given to you. So what was given to me was a shorted out coil. So uh, I would suggest to the manufacturer <laughs> and to, to the rest of you guys, once, once you get this device, the coil and the, and the wick over here is all going to be pre-built. Okay, they're going to put, uh, they're going to use a 24 gauge. Uh, coil in here and it's going to be built down to 0.7 or 0.66 um, what you should do what you all should do is put this thing on a regulated device immediately and then you, you know like like put a little bit of juice on it and then see if it fires okay if you're uh, if it, it, because there's a very high chance that uh, your device will tell you that there is a short. So uh, what happened with this thing? Why did I receive it with a short? Well, whoever built this thing is uh, just like building any other K-Fun or, or um, you know, K-Fun type-ish, you, you know, uh, atomizers or whatever. The coil over here was built down too low and it was touching the bottom of the deck over here. So causing that completion circuit over here so so that that's causing the short and then uh when i put this thing on a mechanical mod and i fired the button the um the mechanical mod you know turned a thousand degrees immediately so 
very careful with that okay so uh what are we going to do uh, i'm going to go ahead and uh rebuild this thing from scratch for you guys because it's really important to see all of the inner workings of this thing and have a thorough explanation of what exactly is going on so uh even though i have a fresh build in here fresh cotton fresh everything i'm just going to go ahead and remove it anyways okay and then we will start from scratch so <clears throat> i'm gonna pull this aside and show you what's going on over here. Uh, what do I like about this thing, okay? My favorite thing about this is about like the idea of different heights and different levels of things, okay? Now here's what's very, very important about this stuff. See how uh, this is obviously a juice channel, right? And then on the other side over here, this is obviously another juice channel, okay? Now, what is important? What's important is that the juice channel of any, <clears throat> um, any good tank, a well-designed tank, all right, the airflow hole would be higher than the base of the juice channel. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Why, why is this? Why is this important? Okay, because um, let's say it was uh, a different device, okay? Let's say... Let's say this mechanical vice, device over here, let's say this was the airflow, and then these are the juice channels on the side, okay? Well, what happens is that, like, when you go ahead and you put some wick on this, if it's at the same level, it's very possible that, you know, through gravity, through whatever, like, you know, you're going to get juice that's going to get in here. Right, but that doesn't happen with, like, a Russian or a Kathan or anything like that, because the, the, the hole, it has a height. The, 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 it's, it's raised. From, from where it is. So then basically what happens is that like we could go ahead and put a lot of cotton over here, okay, uh, so, so that it's kind of like a wick wall, it's kind of like a it, it, within a bath of the uh, the the e-juice, the e right? And then, you know, have the wick come up through our coil and everything, and it will never make it. it there will be never, uh, there will never ever be so much flooding that it will make it into uh, the airflow and leading to uh, leakage at the bottom. You see what I'm saying? And that's what makes a tank a very, very good design, okay? So the only thing that's bad about this for me was uh, the pre-built coil for, uh, at the beginning. I don't know who built it, but they were very good at it. Or uh, something got smushed over here so that it, the coil was touching this and then we had a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this thing on a meter. And then we will build this thing together, and then I will show you some uh, building skills while, while we're at it, okay? So <clears throat> here's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, I'm going to go, uh, use a 26 gauge wire today, okay? So here we go, and uh, 26 gauge, right? And uh, we're going to go ahead and build a macro type-ish coil, okay? So the macro type coil using uh, your precision screwdrivers, over here, okay, I'm going to use the number one screwdriver, which is the largest one. Now, what I'm going to do is that uh, we're going to go ahead and put a bunch of wraps on this thing, okay? Now, how many wraps should we do? I think, I'm thinking like about nine wraps is good. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so, it's nine wraps over here. I'm going to push this in. Right <clears throat> now, let me adjust the camera a little bit so that like you guys can see my hands and what I'm doing. I'm gonna type, pull this down, pull this down over here, okay, and then tweak this again. Right. So <clears throat> with my set, I always have the uh, the cheaper pair of uh, tweezers over here. Okay. Well, you you always want the uh, to use the cheaper tweezers because the cheap tweezers uh, they heat up very easily so that when you torch your canthal it doesn't counteract as a heat sink so that like you know your coils never get hot okay no, I'd say that's good enough. All right, so <clears throat> what do we do from here? From here, we're going to go ahead and then reapply this thing back onto our screwdriver, okay? And then you can see that over here, like so, okay? This is where it dips in, right? Where it dips in like so, like this. 
okay? Because the way that it's designed, it's not like the K-Fun where, you know, this whole piece is a flat piece like this, and then we need to go ahead and then build the coil upwards this way. Instead, we build the coil lower, downwards this way, so that it dips in instead. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to show you some, some, some cool little tricks so that, like, you know, those times where you feel as if, like, you, you need a third hand, uh, you won't need one, okay? So twist this over here. And then I'm going to bring this over here, and then I'm going to uh, hold this in place, right? Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to wrap this around the screw over here, and then I'm going to wrap this this way. This way, when I pull down backwards, see this? This is this is tightened within the, the body of it, okay? If you need a little more torque or whatever, then, you know, definitely you could grab, like, a plier or something like this over here, and then, you know, bring it to, closer to you, right? Then... As I lean back on my tools, and then I bring this wire back out again, and voila, this thing is set. So I would spin this around the other way, come down here, bring this around the screw, bring this around the top over here. You know, it's kind of like origami, right? So I'm going to pull tightly over here, okay? And then I'm going to hang back in this direction right, and then screw down this screw, okay, then I bring my canthal back out, and then everything is nice and slug, I'll be able to do it with two hands, no struggling, so now we're just going to go ahead, take this thing, spin, 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 uh, I should make sure that this thing is tightened down a little bit better before we go ahead and use the spin method. If not, then, you know, just clip it. Okay, so. Now we have a nice and solid coil over here in the center. Okay, now, exactly what I was saying earlier, right? If we turn the coil this way, right, the coil should not be touching the base. All right, let me get a little tool over here so that you can see that the coil over here should not be touching the base down here. If it does, it's going to create a short, right? So you could go ahead and put your screwdriver over here and then, you know, give it a little bit of a lift or something like that so that, you know, it's 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 nice and, and lifted over here, okay? So <clears throat> what I would like to do right now is go ahead and put this on a mechanical device real quick so that we could go ahead and uh, work out a little bit of the hot spots, okay? Uh, mechanical device that I'm using is going to be the uh, the new version 19. Uh, we will cover this in another video. So I'm going to go ahead and pulse this a few times and then get this going nice and red. See, I don't even have hot spots on this one. When your coil is, is, is made very nicely and you've, uh, you know, tugged it and everything with your pliers, should be no problems, okay? All right, so now <clears throat> let's move on to wicking this thing, okay? Uh, there's many ways to wick this thing, uh, but, you know, these days, cellu cotton is old craze, so we're going to go ahead and work with the cellu cotton, okay? Here we go. Piece of cellu cotton right here, nice and fluffy, everything running parallel from each other. So basically, you know, you have a, uh, a macro coil over here, so go by eye, you know? I think something like, I don't know, a third is good okay so tug this out seems about right okay I'm gonna just take one side and just just pinch it so that like we could go ahead and thread this through All right I'm gonna cut off the tip a little bit and then boom we go through now once I pull through this to the other side okay what I really want is uh, you know enough cotton to be exactly where the juice channel is going to be, right? And then the rest of it is just going to have, like, you know, some cotton sitter over here in a bath of its own so that, like, you, you know, uh, the juice never floods to the point where it's going to get into the hole, as I explained earlier. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and use uh, one of my flathead screwdrivers over here, okay? And then we're going to bring it around this way and then tuck the rest of the cotton against uh, the post over here. See what I'm saying? 
Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And tuck it in with the negative post. The other side was tucked in with the positive post, right? Okay, and then, you know, nothing too crazy. I'm, I'm just going to cut off a little bit of the sides like this so that we still have, a, like, a little bit of cotton to work with, right, as we, you know, put it into the rest of the body so that there is support from the back as well, okay? And that's really all there is to it. From this point on, we go ahead and put our uh, little chimney cap back in place. Okay. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, around nine wraps of, um, what is it, 26 gauge cantle should give us close to around the one ohm area. 1.24, that's not bad. Okay, so <clears throat> this is done over here, and then uh, there's still a lot of juice in my original tank, so I'm going to go ahead and then just screw this back on like so, okay, and then will we turn around over here, you know, the gravity will just feed it back. The, the top gold ring over here, okay, is what you release, let me just... Use a towel to help me release the top because it's a little slippery right now. Okay, because this thing has has O rings on it. So what what I like is the whole top fed system over here, right? So we're gonna go ahead and um, you know release the hex key over here, and then I'm gonna get a little bit of juice. As always, I'm not going to talk about the juice that I'm using. This is not important. Okay. This is a decent fill. We don't have to fill it all the way to the top. Careful how you fill it. Just fill it slowly. You know, Unless you have a syringe, then you could go a little quicker. All right. <clears throat> so... What I like the most about this company is that uh, you may or may not agree with the uh, design of this item in terms of styling. However, uh, you could tell that they're a company that cares very much about styling because of uh, what, what they what they attempt to do here. So if I could get my uh, hex key back in position, back in here. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Screw this back on. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to take this and put this here. See see what I'm saying? It's trying to, it, it, it tries to hide it. There we go. Okay. So now that is the Aga T5 completely built, juiced up, and ready to go. Okay. It's not going to, it's not going to leak from the bottom and, and it's, uh, the wicking is actually going to be able to keep up with 30 watts. Okay. Um, what I would like to recommend along with this item is for those of you who are looking for, uh, you know, an atomizer and a mech mod to go along with, um, I want you to have, um, consider the, uh, the version 19, which is also by Ude. They kind of go hand in hand together. Okay. There will be another video specifically on this mod. All right. So let's come back to the top cam and then talk more about this item. All right, back to the top cam over here, guys. So what I want to show you is now what it, the ohms is at, right? Let me uh, go ahead and focus this in for you guys, okay? What the ohms is at and when it fires, 6.2 volts, okay, at 30 watts, and how it's actually able to keep up with the wicket. I'm not a cloud chaser. I'm not a big fan of cloud chasing, but... The performance of the, this thing, the density of the vapor, incredibly thick. I highly recommend uh, this atomizer over a lot of atomizers for now. Uh, the reason being, okay, 
It's because of its ability to produce such dense vapor that like many of you who might be on the road to zero nick, like you're working your way down from, you know, 12 to 8 to 6 to 3 to 2 or whatever, uh, this could seriously help you guys with um, producing that dense cloud so that like, you know, you could go down to the 2 to the 1 and eventually 0. So uh, it's definitely an interesting item to th think over and, uh, you know, I hope you guys consider this. Take care, guys.